Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, in a previous video, we talked about Wall Street. So in this video, we're going to talk about researching a stock. Uh, more specifically, um, you know, we're going to talk about four key steps to researching you know any stock out there, right? So researching a stock, it's a lot like when you're going to look and shop for a new car, right? Um, you know, you can kind of you know, most of your decision is going to be based on technical specs, gas mileage, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but it's also, going to, you know, important to see how the car drives, right? How's it feel on the road? Does the manufacturer have a good reputation or do they have a lot of recalls? Um, you know, or like, say in my case, you know, I have a dog and he is a light brown, but I have uh, black seats and, you know, his hair gets absolutely everywhere. So it's probably something I should have thought about before getting my vehicle. <laughs> but this type of uh, stock research is what's called fundamental analysis, right? So what does that mean? That means that we're going to be looking at a range of factors, right? Uh, stuff like the company's financials, uh, what leadership they have in place, and who are their competition, right? Uh, and we're going to use these things to evaluate a stock and decide if it actually deserves a spot in your portfolio or not, right? So the four key steps to evaluating any stock, uh, and, and you know we're gonna dive into this, but just before we do that, I, I want I want to let you know, you know, um, stocks are considered long-term investments. I know there's some people who do option tradings and stuff like that. That's not what we're talking about, right? We're not talking about any of that, right? So stocks are gonna be considered a long-term investment because they carry you know quite a bit of risk, right? You don't know what's going to happen to a company next week, right? These are very, these are, you know, steps to evaluate a company, right? But it's still just an educated guess, right? And the reason why I say they, you know, uh, carry a bit of risk is because any money that you're going to put into these companies, you need to be okay with saying, you know, like dealing with ups and downs because the stock market goes ups and downs. Like you don't need to be checking every day. But over time, over, you know, over long periods of time, it goes up, right? So most of the money that you put in the stock market, right, it needs to be money that you're not going to need for anything within the next at least three to five years, right? So we're going to go ahead and get into the first one. It's going to be research materials. You need to get your research materials, right? So we're going to start by reviewing the company's financials. This is going to be quantitative research. And it begins with pulling together a couple of documents that companies are required to file with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, right? So the first one is going to be a Form 10-K. Uh, that's going to be an annual report that includes, you know, uh, certain financial statements. Um, and they've been independently audited, right? It means the company itself hasn't audited itself. It, this is done by someone else. Here you can review their balance sheet. Uh, all the different sources of income, how it handles its cash, um, you can see its revenues, expenses, all that good information, right? The second one is going to be a Form 10-Q, which is just a quarterly update on operations and financial results, okay? But, lucky for you, right, um, you'll find a lot of these highlights from, a, from like these two filings and important uh, financial ratios on your brokerages um, their website right or say a major financial websites you know Yahoo financial stuff like that right um, and that information is going to help you compare a company's performance against other companies performance so you can see where it's best for you to put your money like where do you want to invest it you know so the second thing we're going to talk about is narrowing your focus right so these financial reports contain a ton of numbers and it's easy to get bogged down, right? You need to really focus in on certain line items to become familiar with the, you know, the measurable inner workings of a company, right? So one of these is going to be revenue, right? And this is the amount of money a company brought in during the specified period. It's the first thing you'll see on an income statement which is why it's often referred to as the top line, right? I'm sure you heard the opposite, right? Someone's bottom line. 
But sometimes revenue is broken down into operating revenue and non-operating revenue. Operating revenue is most telling because it's generated from the company's core business. Non-operating revenue often comes from one-time business activities like selling selling a plant or a business or something like that that they you know they no longer use, you know, stuff like that or machinery. Um so the next one's going to be net income. Like I said, this is the bottom line figure, right? And it's called that because it's listed at the end of the income statement, right? It's the total amount of money a company has made after operating expenses, taxes, depreciation, all these things are subtracted from revenue, right? Uh, revenue is the equivalent of your, say like for you, your gross salary, and net income is comparable to what's left over, right? That's your take-home pay, right? So the next, another thing we're going to look at is, is called um, earnings and earnings per share. So, uh, sometimes you'll see this at EPS, right? Uh, when you divide your earnings by the number of shares available to trade, you get the earnings per share. And a lot of websites already do this for you, right? Uh, but this number shows a company's profitability on a per share basis, which makes it easier to compare with other companies. When you see earnings per share followed by um, the TTM, that's trailing 12 months, right? Earnings is far from a perfect, like, you know, uh, financial measurement because it doesn't tell you how or how efficiently the company uses its capital, right? Some companies take those earnings and reinvest them in the business. Others pay them out to shareholders in the form of dividends. I love dividends, just wanted to interject that for a second. Uh, so the next thing we're going to talk about is price earnings ratio. Sometimes you'll see this as P slash E, right? Dividing a company's current stock price by its earnings per share, usually over the past 12 months, gives you a company's trailing P-E ratio. Dividing the stock price by forecasted earnings, say from some Wall Street analysts or like a brokerage analyst, gives you the forward PE. This measure of a stock's value tells you how much investors are willing to pay to receive one dollar of the company's current earnings. Keep in mind though that the PE ratio is derived from the potentially flawed earnings per share calculation and analyst estimates are usually focused on short term. So it's not really a reliable standalone metric, right? So the next thing we're going to talk about is return on equity, ROE, and return on assets, ROA. Return on equity reveals, you know, in, a, in percentage terms, how much profit a company generates with each dollar shareholders have invested. The equity is shareholder equity. Return on assets is going to it's going to show what percentage of its profits the company generates with each dollar of its assets. Each is derived from dividing a company's annual net income by one of those measures. These percentages also tell you something about how efficient the company is at generating profits. So here again, you got to be aware of the ah, gotcha. Right, because a company can artificially boost return on equity by buying back shares to reduce the shareholder equity denominator. Right. Uh, similarly, taking on more debt, say like loans to increase inventory or like to finance a brand new property, increases the amount in assets used to calculate return on assets. Right. So you really got to be careful about you know some of these things. That's why we want to look at all of them. Right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn to qualitative research, right? If quantitative research reveals the black and white financials of a company's story, qualitative research provides the, say, technicolor details that give you a more, say, a, a truer picture of its operations and prospects, right? So uh, a famous quote by Warren Buffett said, uh, uh, buy into a company because you want to own it not because you want the stock to go up. That's because when you buy stocks, you purchase a personal stake in that business, right? 
So here are some questions to help you screen, um, you know, your quote unquote potential business partners, right? Because you're buying into the business, right? How does the company make money? Sometimes it's obvious, such as a clothing retailer whose main business is selling clothes. Sometimes it's not, such as a fast food company that derives most of its revenues from selling franchises or an electronics firm that relies on providing consumer financing for growth. Right, A good rule of thumb that served uh, Mr. Warren Buffett well is invest in common sense companies that you actually understand. Right. Next question is going to be, does this company have a competitive advantage? Right. Look for something about the business that makes it difficult to imitate, equal or eclipse. Right. This could be its brand, business model, ability to innovate, research capabilities, maybe it owns a bunch of patents, its operational excellence, or superior uh, distribution capabilities, right? And there, the list could go on and on, right? There's so many things, right? The harder it is for competitors to breach the company's moat, the stronger the competitive advantage, right? The next question is going to be, how good is the management team? A company is only as good as its leaders, right? And a company is only as good as those leaders' ability to plot a course and steer that company, right? You can find out a lot about management by reading their words in the transcripts of company conference calls and annual reports. Also, research the company's board of directors, the people representing shareholders in the boardroom. Be wary of boards compromised mainly of company insiders. You want to see a healthy number of independent thinkers who can objectively assess management's actions. So the last question is going to be, what could go wrong? We're not talking about developments that might actually affect the company's stock price in the short term, but fundamental changes that affect a business's ability to grow over many, many years, right? Identify potential red flags using, say, like a what-if scenario. An important, maybe an important patent expires. Uh, the CEO's successor starts taking the business in like a brand new, different direction. Um, maybe like one of the compet, uh, like a new viable competitor comes out out of nowhere, or new technology, um, you know, just takes the company's product or service right, just snatches it from them right. So there's all these different questions you need to be looking for, you know, asking about and stuff like that. So. Key number four, put your research content into context, right? As you, you know, as I'm sure you're aware, there are endless metrics and ratios investors can use to assess a company's general financial health and to calculate the intrinsic value of its stock. But looking solely at a company's revenue or income from a single year or the management team's most recent decisions, it paints an incomplete picture. So before you buy any stock, you want to build a well-informed narrative about the company and what factors make it worthy of a long-term partnership. Right? And to do that, context is key. For long-term context, pull back the lens of your research to look at the historical data, right? This will give you insight into the company's resilience during tough times, their reaction to challenges, and their ability to improve its performance and deliver shareholder value over time. Then, look at how the company fits into the big picture by comparing the numbers and key ratios above, the ones we've talked about, right, to industry averages and other companies in the same or similar business. The easiest way to make these comparisons is by using the research tools provided, say, you know, on your broker's website, or, if, you know, if you're not on a broker's website, just use, like, Yahoo Finance, uh, you know, or use, you know, like a, a stock screen or, so, you know, something like that, right? Um, so hopefully you guys have gotten, you know, quite a bit of information from this video. Um, if you have any specific questions, you can go ahead and drop a comment down there, and I'll try my best to get, get to them. Um, hopefully you guys liked this video. If you did, go ahead and kill that like button for me. Uh, and maybe subscribe if you guys are feeling generous. 
And uh, I hope you guys are good. And until the next one, y'all be safe.